Hello friends, welcome to the show Bottoms Up Research with Harshit Oshniwal. Over the last two years, there have been many new investors who have come to Indian equity markets. What this video offers is a detailed analysis of cement sector. We also cover three of its largest names, Ultratech Cement, ACC Ambuja and Tree Cement. Give me one hour of your dedicated time and I assure you that at the end of the presentation, you will be in a much better position to take investment decisions in the sector. So guys, let's dive in. Let me start by giving the context of the key discussion areas for today's discussion presentation. So firstly, we are going to start by discussing the whys and the hows of cement. Why is the cement needed? What is the key importance of that in our overall economy? What are its key demand drivers and how the cement is manufactured? That's going to be the first part of our discussion. The second part of our discussion is going to be the regional dynamics. Cement is a bulky material. It's a low value but a very high volume product hence manufacturing it in say Punjab in the north and consuming it in Kerala in the south is very unsustainable so we divide India into five regions north south central east and west and then we understand the demand and supply dynamics of each region to understand the overall impact another important point is that cement plant requires very high upfront capital investment but it yields positive cash flows over a long period of time 40 50 60 years so cement plant which was in 1960s was yield karti hai. So we need to look at the project IRRs over a very long period of time. So we are going to cover that part. One of the most commonly tracked metrics in cement is EBITDA per ton. And this number follows a very volatile pattern across quarters and years. It varies by 30-40% over to very small periods of time. The reason being 50% of the overall manufacturing cost of cement is basically power and fuel and logistics cost both of which are indirectly or directly linked to oil prices hence this EBITDA per ton is a sensitive number why is understanding that sensitivity important is to catch the bottom and the peak of the cycles when we invest in this sector then we are going to cover three of the largest cement players ultra tech cement Sri cement and ACC Ambuja all three combined more makes up more than around 40% of the overall India's capacities. We are going to look at how Adani coming into the picture uh, changes the game. What are the key implications of that uh, event? Finally, we are going to devise some ground rules for investing in the sector. We are primarily going to look at what is the two or three key important metric that drives the stock in this particular sector. So let's start. Friends, start karte hai ki cement consumption ko across countries kaise compare kiya jata hai. So one of the most commonly used metrics is per capita cement consumption. When we look at India, the per capita cement consumption is roughly around 250 kgs. Ye number globally, the average is around 525 kgs. Uh, one thing which is important to uh, keep in mind when we compare countries, a lot depends ki wo country apne development phase mein kaha hai. For example, USA, a lot of their infra development happened in the 19th century. So today the number looks lower than the global average. But for example, countries like China, Korea, Vietnam, where a lot of their infra development has happened in the last two, three decades, the number can be as high as around 800 to 1500 kgs per capita consumption. So in India, since expectation is that in the next two, three decades, we are going to improve our infrastructure, there is room for this number to grow. One more way to understand this is that hum look cement ko typically dekhe hai bags ke format mein in various stores. Now standard weight of a particular bag is roughly around 50 kgs. One more way to put this to 50 kg number is ki ek aadmi saal mein paanch bag consume karta hai. More like an average number for India. So that is it and one second part is that when we look at cement it forms one of the basic raw material for any civil construction roads rails bridges houses take example of a thousand square feet built up area house agar land showed there then its overall construction cost is roughly 1200 to 1300 rupees per square feet 12 se 13 lakh rupya ek hazar square feet ghar banane ka kharcha hai usme cement forms around 15 to 16 percent of the overall cost that is how relevant this product is if I look at India, total consumption of cement is 350 million ton of cement per annum. And what are the key use cases? 60% 60% of the use case is housing. 27% use case is infra. Jab main infra kehta hu, what we mean is roads, rails, bridges, etc. And around 12% of the use case is industrial and commercial uses. Things like factories, offices, etc. And all these three grow in line with the economy. If I look at the last two decades, cement demand has grown at 6% Kegar. 
currently it's around 350 million ton but at the same time supply has grown at 8% kegar when we look at the demand growth it has been fairly steady barring obviously in years around elections demand may expert aati hai but otherwise it has been very steady and when we look at supply because of supply growing faster than demand our utilizations have dropped from around 80-85% levels to 60-65% levels the reason that supply people have and companies have added supply consistently because India it is expected that going forward the demand growth is going to be more than 6% slightly higher than that only so broad summary that cement as a overall raw material is one of the core raw material for any civil construction forming around 15% of the cost and India has runway for growth let's understand the manufacturing process so if we talk cement ki baat kare, to sabse पहला चीज है कि what is the core raw material of cement that is limestone limestone का chem, chemical formula क्या है it's calcium carbonate so CaCO3 now limestone पाया कैसे जाता है in form of bulky rocks uh, so पहले उन rocks को तोड़ के we need to convert it in form of homogeneous materials then in the second process limestone is converted into a substance called clinker in the second process, ye hoti hai? these raw materials in its homogeneous form are burned at around 1500 to 1600 degrees Celsius, right? And this is this happens in large burners, which is known as rotary kiln. And in this process, calcium carbonate se CO2 hatta hai, and what remains is calcium oxide. Along with limestone, we also put clay as an additive material. Clay has aluminium and silicon elements. So this calcium oxide, which comes out, that adds with aluminium and silicon elements of clay. And this combined substance is what we know as clinker. This is a very important process in the entire uh, journey because it involves 35-40% of the overall production cost. And a lot of optimization can happen by a company if they devote time in efficiently operating this part the third part of the cement manufacturing process is grinding units so here 95 units of clinker is added with 5 units of gypsum to make 100 units of cement uh, the key is meant there is no additional raw material but there is use of power and electricity to produce cement uh, and once this cement is produced then it is distributed across various regions uh, gets allocated an important reason why gypsum is required kya hota aap dekho ke cement ko jab hum use karte hai then water is added to cement sand to make a substance called concrete it's a slimy liquid substance agar gypsum nahi rahega cement mein then wo bahut jaldi pani dalte hi solidify ho jayega so there will be no time for applying that concrete on to the construction uh, element which is why gypsum is needed to prevent the cement from turning into a solid material as soon as water is added to it now let's look at the limestone availability in india we are a very self-sufficient country when it comes to limestone we have around 200 billion tons of limestone reserves our annual consumption is around 380 400 million ton so to that extent we have around 500 times of annual consumption as reserves so reserves ki koi problem nahi hai. but what is important to understand that these reserves are not uh, equally distributed across countries right if we North, ki baat kare, then Rajasthan has the most abundant limestone reserves. Rajasthan rather produces 20% of the overall India's limestone uh, production. In South, Karnataka has the highest reserves. But even the other states, AP, Telangana, uh, Kerala, Tamil Nadu, they have decent amount of reserves uh, overall level. Pe. So that was a broad gypsum ki availability. 70-80% of the gypsum in India is available in Rajasthan only. So that is one additional key point. Cement ki jab hum baat karte, then also let's understand the key types of cement. The one which we discussed above is the ordinary Portland cement where 95 units percent of clinker and 5% of gypsum is what forms the cement. Now one point here is that cement has its environmental consequences because jab hum limestone ko jalate hai to make it to convert it to clinker then carbon dioxide is emitted in that process which is an environment polluting element. So objective here to reduce the emission of carbon dioxide so that the entire process can the environmental consequences of the process can be improved so what can be the way one way is to replace clinker with some other material clinker ko hum kisi aur material se replace kar sakte hai kya here comes two other cement types portland pozzolana cement ppc and portland slag cement psc 
वट वी डू हेयर इज दैट हम लोग क्लिंकर को रिप्लेस करते हैं विथ फ्लाइश एंड स्लैग फ्लाइश एंड स्लैग क्या है दे आर नथिंग बट रेसिड्यू प्रोडक्ट्स ऑफ मैनुफैक्चरिंग ऑफ पावर एंड मैनुफैक्चरिंग ऑफ स्टील नाउ दीज आर रेसिड्यू प्रोडक्ट्स ये बनेंगे ही वेदर वी वॉन्टेड और नॉट सो द बेस्ट यूज केस इज दैट इफ दिस रेसिड्यू प्रोडक्ट्स कैन बी एडेड टू सीमेंट मैनुफैक्चरिंग बाई रिप्लेसिंग क्लिंकर देन इट्स अ विन विन सिचुएशन फॉर एवरी वन फ्रॉम एन एनवायरमेंट पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू क्लिंकर प्रोडक्शन कम रहेगा सो कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड एमिशन विल बी लोअर फ्रॉम अ कंज्यूमर पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू पी पी सी एंड पी एस सी बोथ आर मच मोर डेंसर देन ओ पी सी एज अ रिजल्ट दे आर स्ट्रॉगर कंस्ट्रक्शन मटीरियल एंड फ्रॉम अ सीमेंट कंपनी पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू ओ पी पी सी एंड पी एस सी बोथ हैव अ लोअर कॉस्ट ऑफ प्रोडक्शन कंपेयर टू ओ पी सी सो इन अ वे शिफ्टिंग फ्रॉम ओ पी सी टू दी अदर टू कैटेगरीज इज अ विन विन सिचुएशन फॉर एवरी वन एक चीज़ इंपॉर्टेंटली आई दैट इवन विद इन द थ्री पोर्टलैंड स्लैक सीमेंट इज द मोस्ट एफिशियंट वन द रीजन बींग बिकॉज ऑफ द स्लैग इट इज़ वेरी मच रेजिस्टेंट टू वेरी हाई टेम्परेचर और सल्फेट और केमिकल अटैक्स सो वेन वी लुक एट थिंग्स नियर वाटर डैम्स ब्रिजेज एक्सेट्रा पी एस सी इज द मोस्ट कॉमनली प्रेफर्ड वन हैविंग सेट दैट वन इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट इज कि बोथ फ्लाई एश एंड स्लैग they are very bulky raw materials so they are available at power plants at steel plants but kyunki ye itne bulky hote hai it's not practical to transport it for very long distances hence a cement plant can use fly ash and slag whatever is available near to its grinding unit right now in india a lot of the steel plants is located and concentrated in east which is why slag availability is mainly there in east एंड एज अ रिजल्ट जब हम ईस्ट की मार्केट देखते हैं देन अराउंड ट्वेंटी सिक्स थर्टी परसेंट ऑफ द ओवरऑल प्रोडक्शन इज पोर्टलैंड स्लैग सीमेंट बट वेन वी लुक एट नॉर्थ वेस्ट साउथ सेंट्रल सिंस स्लैग इज नॉट अवेलेबल वेरी इन नियर बाई लोकेशन उसे बहुत लंबा दूर से ट्रैवल करना पड़ेगा इफ यू कंज्यूम इट इन एनी अदर रीजन हैंड पी एस सी इज नॉट द मोस्ट कॉमन टाइप ऑफ सीमेंट पी पी सी इज वॉट डोमिनोट डोमिनेट्स दीज रीजन्स नाउ पी पी सी पावर प्लांट से आते हैं एंड पावर प्लांट्स इज समथिंग विच इज़ वेल डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड अक्रॉस द कंट्री हैंस वेन आई लुक एट ओवरऑल इंडिया द थ्री टाइप्स ऑफ सीमेंट ओ पी सी पी पी सी पी एस सी उसमें पी पी सी इज़ अराउंड सिक्सटी परसेंट ऑफ द ओवरऑल मार्केट पोर्टलैंड स्लैग सीमेंट इज़ अराउंड एट परसेंट एंड ओ पी सी इज़ अराउंड थर्टी परसेंट ऑफ द ओवरऑल मार्केट फ्रेंड्स अब चलते हैं सीमेंट के रीजनल डायनेमिक्स को समझने के लिए सीमेंट क्योंकि बल्कि है सो आई कैनॉट प्रोड्यूस सीमेंट इन पंजाब एंड कंज्यूम इट इट इन कर्नाटका मेरे को इसलिए इंडिया को पांच भाग में बांटते हैं डिवाइडेड इनटू फाइव रीजन्स नॉर्थ वेस्ट ईस्ट साउथ सेंट्रल एंड साउथ एंड आई ट्राई टू लुक एट द ओवरऑल कैपेसिटी एंड द प्रोडक्शन ऑफ ईच रीजन बिफोर कमिंग टू दैट लेट मी इंट्रोड्यूस वन कॉन्सेप्ट सिंपल इकोनॉमिक प्रिंसिपल यही है कि अगर सप्लाई इज मच हायर देन डिमांड देन इन दैट केस योर प्राइसिंग पावर इज लो एंड योर एबिलिटी टू अर्न प्रॉफिट्स इट्स लो एज अ रिजल्ट इसको और सिंप्लीफाइड वे में बोले तो इफ द कैपेसिटी यूटिलाइजेशन इन अ पर्टिकुलर रीजन इज हाई इट इज गुड इफ द कैपेसिटी यूटिलाइजेशन इज लो इट इज बैड इन इंडिया वेन वी लुक एट नॉर्थ एंड सेंट्रल द कैपेसिटी यूटिलाइजेशन आर हाइस्ट अराउंड एटी टू एटी फाइव परसेंट विच इज वाई दे आर कंसिडर टू बी वन ऑफ द बेटर मार्केट्स विद इन द फाइव रीजन वेन वी लुक एट साउथ इट इज वर्स्ट अराउंड फिफ्टी परसेंट कैपेसिटी यूटिलाइजेशन क्यों If you remember in the previous slide we discussed ki south mein limestone availability is there across uh, most of the states so there are many multiple players chote chote players who have set up their small capacities and unfortunately wo sare small capacities make south a very fragmented market there is no one clear leader and consequently kisi ke paas pricing power nahi hai and it operates as a very inefficient market to that extent when we look at east and west Even though utilizations are similar, they look same 60-60 percent के आसपास. But एक बहुत key difference है. In East, it has been the one of the fastest growing markets. So in line of that growth, people have built up capacity in anticipation कि ये growth और लंबी चलेगी. It's going to grow much faster. So which is why this 61 percent need not be a bad thing. Uh, it will depend कि can demand catch up to that expectation or not, which is an important thing to watch out for. In West, the problem has been with growth. the capacity utilizations are low because growth in the last 5 to 6 years has been very tepid 1 2 percent ke aas pass growth hai we'll learn about individual uh, regions in greater detail in the coming slides let's start with uh, the regional part so koi bhi region ko hum log discuss karenge so we'll cover five points what are those five points what is the overall demand scenario 
how is that how has that region grown over 16 to 22 what are the key demand drivers in that region us region ki demand supply dynamics kya hai basically us region mein kya utilization hai overall level pe because that gives you what is the balance fourth is us region ke competition structure ko samjhege ki kaun sa player kitna bada hai and what how does that impact the market and fifth we are going to understand ki near term mein us region mein kya bahut tez ka supply aa raha hai aur is can that be a problem in that region and so let's start with north north demand has grown at around five percent over 16 to 22 i think the demand is going to be very steady in this segment what are the drivers housing is one of the biggest driver here and there have been pockets of projects so for example western direct freight corridor was there metro expansion were there in few states so which is why the growth has been fairly steady in terms of demand supply balance one of the best regions they operate at 88 90 percent utilization so which is why it's one of the best in this region when we look at competition i think it's a very healthy market top three players are 60 percent plus market share acc ambuja ultra tech and shri cement shri cement and ultra tech have the highest market in this region and then there are again whole host of players with seven eight nine percent market share so is key market uh, structure is something which is very well uh, established plus all these three players are very efficient and logical in terms of their pricing no one undercuts uh, the other because already utilizations are very high so this is why north is one of the better markets even when i look at 23 24 capacity additions i don't see that it's very high it is in line with the five percent of the annual growth so i don't envisage a major problem here it's still one of the best markets to be Let's come to the West market. West mein kaun kaun se do state aate hai? Gujarat and Maharashtra. Ek cheez hai that till FI15, this did very well because Gujarat was on a stupendous growth of its infrastructure. But after 2015-16, uh, thoda sa wo slowdown hua hai already because it was a very high base and hence 16 to 22 mein when I look at the region, the demand has grown at only 2%. Uh, going forward, the demand drivers would be more like maintenance of that particular infrastructure slum redevelopment urbanization etc uh, so i think it's going to grow slower than the overall country uh, uh, going forward in terms of demand supply dynamics again the capacity utilization has not been very high it is around 60 percent levels so and it's not because capacities were added at a very fast pace but primarily because demand did not uh, grow up to the expectations so most of the years there were not much capacities khali ek cheez hai fi 22 mein we saw few new players trying to create some market share in the space so jaise shri cement hai wo kabhi yahan present hi nahi tha but in fi 22 they started one of their plans here uh, which gave them a 4% market share in this region similarly agar hum wonder cement dekhte hai which is which started from north it's a rk marble group company but they have plans to expand in this uh, particular region they want to expand it to 5% market share by FI24. Similarly, Dalmia, uh, Birla Corp, they too have also started to add few more capacity in the in the West region. So, kuch kuch players are rahe hai, but still when we look at the market structure, it is dominated by two players. Ultratech has around 35% market and ACC Ambuja has around 20% market share in this region. And to me, it's not a very exciting market. Uh, slow growth, not much to expect from utilization. Central, it's a good market. So, it's primarily aate hai UP and MP, Uttar Pradesh and Madhya Pradesh. Now, both these regions, I think the demand is going to be better than overall country because uh, these are underpenetrated. A lot of airports, roads, metros is yet to be built up in these two regions. Hence, that will support the overall demand growth in these regions. In terms of demand supply dynamics, uh, they operate at around 79-80% utilization which is fairly healthy and a lot of it is because in the last six years Ultratech has tried to consolidate its position in this market. They acquired JPS at Simmons and as a result they are now around 35% market share in this central region. In ke baad jo next player hai Birla Corp, ACC Ambuja, Prism Cement, ye sab 10-12% market share hai and hence being so dominant he has been able to maintain that pricing discipline and which is why central is considered to be the next best region after north in many of the aspects now in terms of supply overhangs i think supply 23 24 mein yahan kafi aggressively aa rahi hai 
वी आर सींग टेयर लाइक जे के सीमेंट ए सी सी एम बुजा पोस्ट अडानीज एक्विजिशन दे विल बी अग्रेसिव वॉन्डर सीमेंट इज ट्राइंग टू एक्सपैंड विद अ टू मिलियन टन कैपेसिटी इन दी कमिंग ईयर्स सो टू दैट एक्सटेंड वेन आई लुक एट सेंट्रल मार्केट हिस्टोरिकली इट हैज बीन स्टेबल बट आई स्टिल सी की सप्लाईज आर कमिंग एंड कॉम्पिटिशन इज ग्रेजुअली इंक्रीजिंग ईस्ट इज अ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग मार्केट इन माई सेंस बिकॉज वन इट इज अ वेरी हाई ग्रोथ मार्केट इट हैज बीन द हाइस्ट इट हैज रजिस्टर्ड हाइस्ट ग्रोथ इन सिक्सटीन टू ट्वेंटी टू इवन आगे जाके मेरे को लग रहा है उड़ीसा वेस्ट बंगाल इन सब स्टेट्स में देर इज स्टिल अपग्रेडेशन इन हाउसिंग इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर बिल्डिंग अप विच इज गोइंग टू बी अ टेलविन फॉर दी ओवरऑल डिमांड बट हैविंग सेट दैट पीपल हैव ऑल्सो एडेड कैपेसिटी एंड पीपल प्लान टू एड कैपेसिटी एट अ पेस विच इज फेयरली इन लाइन विद द डिमांड ग्रोथ सो आई थिंक दैट इट्स गोन बी एन इंटरेस्टिंग मार्केट टू वॉच आउट फॉर एक और चीज है जो इस मार्केट को इंटरेस्टिंग बनाती है इज इट स्ट्रक्चर सो अनलाइक ऑल दी अदर मार्केट देर इज इट्स नॉट अ वेरी फ्रैगमेंटेड मार्केट बट इन दी टॉप फाइव प्लेयर्स इट इज अ वेरी कंसॉलिडेटेड एंड इक्वल कॉम्पिटिशन मार्केट नाउ अल्ट्राटेक डालमिया श्री ए सी सी एम्बुजा एंड नोवोको ऑल दीज फाइव प्लेयर्स हैव अराउंड फिफ्टीन परसेंट मार्केट शेयर रीच नो वन हैज अ वेरी डोमिनेंट पोजिशन टिल नाउ सो कॉम्पिटिशन इज गोइंग टू बी देर प्लस एक और जो चीज हो रही है अडानी ने ए सी सी एम्बुजा को खरीद लिया एंड देर आर टॉक्स दैट अडानी माइट अक्वायर नोवोको बिकॉज इफ दैट हैपन्स देन अडानी विल हैव अराउंड थर्टी परसेंट प्लस मार्केट शेयर एंड अगर अडानी के पास ईस्ट में थर्टी परसेंट प्लस मार्केट शेयर आ जाता है देन ही बिकेम बिकम्स अ क्लियर लीडर इन दैट रीजन विच विल चेंज द डायनेमिक्स ऑफ द गेम इन दिस पार्ट सो अ लॉट ऑफ थिंग्स इज गोन टू हैपन इज गोन टू बी एन इंटरेस्टिंग मार्केट टू कीप अ वॉच फॉर साउथ एज वी डिस्कस इट्स अ पेरिनियल प्रॉब्लम देर इज नो क्लियर लीडर सो तो फर्स्ट पॉइंट इज दैट इन टर्म्स ऑफ डिमांड देर आर पॉकेट्स ऑफ डिमांड से मेट्रो एक्सपेंशन इन रीजन लाइक कर्नाटका और इन ए पी तेलंगाना देर इज स्टिल अलॉट ऑफ इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर विच इज बींग स्पेंट अपॉन सो टू दैट एक्सटेंड इट्स अ गुड मार्केट शुड ग्रो इन लाइन विद दी ओवरऑल नेशनल एवरेज तीन चार परसेंट ग्रोथ इज नॉट डिफिकल्ट टू अचीव बट एट द सेम पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम दी मार्केट स्ट्रक्चर इज वेरी बैड द लार्जेस्ट प्लेयर अल्ट्राटेक हैज ओनली अराउंड ट्वेल्व परसेंट मार्केट शेयर बाकी आठ नौ परसेंट पे रैमको इंडिया सीमेंट एक्सेट्रा है बट प्रॉब्लम है ये दो तीन चार टू थ्री फोर फाइव सिक्स परसेंट मार्केट शेयर वाले देर आर मल्टीपल प्लेयर्स एंड इन सच अ फ्रैगमेंटेड मार्केट इट बिकम्स डिफिकल्ट टू मेक वेरी हाई रियलाइजेशन एंड ऑपरेटिंग प्रॉफिट्स इन नेक्स्ट टू थ्री ईयर्स आई डोंट थिंक दैट देर इज वो बी एनी मेजर कंसोलिडेशन बट एटलीस्ट एट सम पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम आई बिलीव दैट वन और टू लार्ज प्लेयर्स will consolidate aggressively in this particular region and that is going to be a turning point with respect to that but not a very exciting market from the next 2 3 year point of view so when we look at the summary of what we discussed in the last few slides cement is a bulky product so regional demand supply dynamics is very crucial india mein north is the best region with respect to the pricing discipline east and central are high growth markets i think the growth rate is going to be higher than overall india वेस्ट बहुत सैचुरेटेड मार्केट हो चुका है ऑलरेडी गुजरात महाराष्ट्र इज अ वेल डेवलप्ड वन एंड साउथ सफर्स फ्रॉम द पेरिनियल ओवर सप्लाई प्रॉब्लम नो फ्रेंड्स एक बार लेट्स दिस इज अ ब्रीफ स्नैपशॉट ऑफ द की लिस्टेड एंटिटीज मैं इस स्लाइड में आपको एक खाली ओवरऑल ब्रीफ देना चाहता हूँ अबाउट द बैकग्राउंड ऑफ दीज कंपनीज सो द लार्जेस्ट प्लेयर इन इंडिया इज अल्ट्राटेक इट्स द फ्लैगशिप कंपनी ऑफ आदित्य बिरला ग्रुप दे हैव अराउंड ट्वेंटी परसेंट मार्केट शेयर वन ट्वेंटी मिलियन टन कैपेसिटी the second and one of the most well diversified players in india it's a truly pan india player the second player is shri cement shri cement is a bangar group company uh, and inke two prominent regions are jahan they are present one is in north and the other in, is in east uh, they have around 46 million ton capacity and considered to be the most cost efficient player acc ambuja ki agar hum baat kare so abhi ye adani ne acquire kar liya hai but if i look at acc it has been the oldest cement plant in india 2000 uh, in 1930s 1940s it was made by consolidating 10 cement companies uh, and that was its origin they are still relevant the plants are still running but it's it's one of the oldest one ambuja is actually a first gen entrepreneurship story of narottam saxaria uh, high regards for that man for building ambuja is to be one of the best plants uh, amongst the industry now both of them are with adani and yahan se adani will take it up overall they combine around 12% market share acc ambuja at this point of time dalmia 
is a east oriented country a good part of their uh, business is there in the eastern region it's fairly around 17 18% market share in that region ramco is a tamil nadu specific company within that region he has a very strong market share roughly 20 million ton capacity nuvoco is a company which has been formed through predominantly in organic acquisitions ye hai nirma group ki company the fmcg uh, behemoth which we remember and what they have done is that in the last decade inhone lafarge ke assets kharide inhone imami cements ke asset kharide and with that acquisitions they have now become a very prominent player in east and they also have some capacity capacities in the northern regions jk cement jk lakshmi bhi a company i not put up in this uh, chart but jk cement jk lakshmi are part of the jk industrial groups they both are companies of two different brothers of the group birla corp was a part of birla uh, cement over, uh, earlier but at the time of separation this then went to harshwardhan loda who looks at this company right now sagar cement is again a south oriented and as we discussed ultratech is highest with 20% market share acc ambuja has around 12% market share sri 8% then we have whole lot of players in the range of 2 to 7% market share and it's a long tailed industry now friends cement ko agar hum economics ki baat kare so typically cement bag ka ek cost aata hai 350 rupees per bag roughly cost i mean uh, it's an average one इसी को हम कन्वर्ट करें एक बैग अगर पचास के जी इज इक्वल टू वन बैग एंड थाउजेंड के जी विच इज इक्वल टू वन टन इज रफली अराउंड ट्वेंटी बैग्स तो एक थाउजेंड के जी एक टन सीमेंट का कॉस्ट इज रफली अराउंड सेवन थाउजेंड रुपीज राइट बट वेन वी लुक एट द रियलाइजेशन पर टन फॉर मोस्ट ऑफ दीज प्लेयर्स दैट नंबर इज समेयर इन द रेंज ऑफ अराउंड फाइव थाउजेंड फाइव हंड्रेड टू फाइव थाउजेंड रुपीज सो क्या डिफरेंस है दैट दिस डिफरेंस ऑफ टू थाउजेंड बिटवीन रियलाइजेशन एंड द सेलिंग प्राइस इज बेसिकली नथिंग बट डीलर कमीशन एंड डिस्काउंट्स राइट एंड वेन वी लुक एट द एबिटा पर्टन फॉर डिफरेंट प्लेयर्स दिस इज द ऑपरेटिंग प्रॉफिटेबिलिटी पर्टन मेट्रिक्स दैट नंबर इज ऑन एन एवरेज अराउंड थाउजेंड रुपीज फॉर एफ आई ट्वेंटी टू सो द डिफरेंस बिटवीन द नेट रियलाइजेशन एंड द एबिटा पर्टन ऑफ अराउंड फोर थाउजेंड रुपीज इज नथिंग बट द कॉस्ट ऑफ प्रोडक्शन we we'll, we are going to discuss all these things in greater detail but only one thing to be clarified here is ki selling price of cement hai around 7000 rupees 2000 rupees is dealer discount dealer commissions etc net realization which these companies get is around 5500 rupees 5000 to 5500 rupees 4000 4000 is the average cost of production and their ebitda ranges at around 1000 rupees ebitda per ton now dosto when we look at cement Uh, एक इंपॉर्टेंट चीज है इन मैन्युफैक्चर इन सेटिंग अप अ सीमेंट प्लान देर इज एन हाई अपफ्रंट कॉस्ट इन्वॉल्वमेंट राइट सो योर अपफ्रंट कॉस्ट इज वेरी हाई बट दैट सीमेंट प्लान गिव्स यू इनकम एंड अ स्टडी स्टेट इनकम फॉर अराउंड 40 टू 50 इयर्स सो कोई सीमेंट प्लान अगर 1930s, 40s, 50s में बनाई गई थी वो आज भी दे ऑपरेट एंड दे इल्ड कैश फ्लो राइट सो कोई भी सीमेंट यूनिट के आई आर को समझने के लिए वील हैव टू इलांगेट द पीरियड फॉर 50, 60 इयर्स टू अंडरस्टैंड दैट राइट नाउ आज एक सीमेंट ग्रीनफील्ड सीमेंट कैपेसिटी एडिशन का कॉस्ट है अराउंड हंड्रेड टेन डॉलर पर टन दिस इज फ्रॉम अल्ट्राटेक सीमेंट कॉल रिसेंट कॉल जहाँ पे उन्होंने कहा है दैट अ ग्रीनफील्ड केपेक्स विल कॉस्ट अराउंड हंड्रेड एंड टेन टू वन ट्वेंटी डॉलर विच इज रफली अराउंड एटी एट हंड्रेड रुपीज इफ आई लुक एट द ब्रेकअप अगेन दिस इंक्लूड्स एवरीथिंग लैंड एंड माइनिंग राइट्स प्लांट एंड मशीनरी सिविल वर्क ऑफ सेटिंग अप दैट प्लांट इरेक्शन कमिशनिंग कॉस्ट कैप्टिव पावर प्लांट एक्सेट्रा सब लेके आठ हजार आठ सौ पर टन का एक खर्चा है एंड सो दिस इज द फर्स्ट मेट्रिक दैट वॉट इज दल कैपिटल कॉस्ट टू बिल्ड अ पर्टिकुलर प्लांट द सेकेंड इंपॉर्टेंट मेट्रिक्स इज वॉट इज द यूटिलाइजेशन नाउ दिस डिपेंड्स कि आप कौन से रीजन में हो अगर आप नॉर्थ में हो देन यू कैन एक्सपेक्ट एट्टी परसेंट यूटिलाइजेशन ऑन अ मोर स्टडी स्टेट बेसिस बट से फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ यू आर इन अ रीजन लाइक साउथ देन यू विल हैव टू बिल्ड अ फिफ्टी सिक्सटी सेवेंटी परसेंट यूटिलाइजेशन इन द बेस्ट केस सिनारी सो दो थिंग्स मैटर वेल यू लुक एट द यूटिलाइजेशन लेवल्स एक्सपेक्टेशन सो मैं अस्सी परसेंट लेके चल रहा हूँ बिकॉज आई थिंक इंडिया इज मोर एट सिक्सटी सिक्सटी फाइव परसेंट लेवल 
बिलीव इज दैट ओवर टाइम एज डिमांड मॉडरेट्स एंड सप्लाई एडिशंस धीरे धीरे कम होते हैं विल बी एबल टू ऑपरेट एट अराउंड एटी परसेंट यूटिलाइजेशन एंड दी थर्ड मेट्रिक्स इज दी एबिटा पटन एंड दिस डिपेंड्स लॉड ऑन लॉड ऑफ थिंग्स कि मेरा रियलाइजेशन पावर क्या है विथ रेस्पेक्ट टू एंड ऑल्सो वॉट इज माई कॉस्ट एफिशियंसीज मैं कितने कम खर्चे में वॉट इज मैं अपना प्रोडक्शन कर सकता हूँ ऑल ऑफ दीज अल्टीमेटली कम्बाइंड टू दी एबिटा पटन नंबर फिगर विच इज़ दी थर्ड की इंपॉर्टेंट मेट्रिक्स सो राइट नाउ इंडिया इज एट थाउजेंड I think that this number can grow at two to three percent kegar for a longer period of time. But having said that, we need to understand that this number cannot grow in a FMG style manner. That it grows two percent every year. No, the growth in EBITDA burn typically happens like a staircase model. कि वो बहुत लंबे टाइम तक आर EBITDA burn for the industry was sub thousand rupees for last five, six, seven years. Covid came, a lot of efficiency improvements happen. and that now scaled up to around 1100000 rupees per ton it's going to stabilize at this point for some more years gradually then scale up to 1200 1300 so ek tarah se staircase jump karke chalega but over years expectation is that there can be 2 to 3% kegar if i try to incorporate all these three things to uh, deduce what is my irr ye project se main kitna kama pata hu then my cash flows look like this that i spend around 8800 today and i get a stream of cash flows for 40 50 years uh, basis my utilization and my ebitda per ton and the irr post tax irr which this economics throws me is around 8% right so a cement plant in today's greenfield assumption of a capacity addition yields around 8% irr but again these irrs are post tax irr for a very long period of 50 60 years so it's a brief understanding so its ka main purpose hai कि क्या थ्री फोर वेरिएबल्स है अगर कोई नई कंपनी अपनी कोई कैपेसिटी अनाउंसमेंट करता है देन विल हैव टू लुक एट थ्री फोर थिंग्स वन व्हाट इज द प्रोजेक्ट कैपिटल कॉस्ट अगर वो ग्रीनफील्ड कर रहा है तो व्हाट इज द एबिटा पर टर्न द कॉस्ट पर टर्न नंबर विच वी शुड अज्यूम बट अ लॉट ऑफ कैपिटल न्यू कैपेसिटी एडिशन विच इज हैपन इन द लास्ट फ्यू ईयर्स इज बेसिकली ब्राउन फील्ड कंपनी के पास ऑलरेडी लैंड थी एंड दे एक्सपेंडेड ऑन दैट पर्टिकुलर लैंड विच इज वाई दी कॉस्ट ऑफ सेटिंग अप अ प्लान वॉज मच लोअर देन दिस स्टेटेड नंबर Uh, so that project capital cost is an important part the second is what is the utilization which the company can run at the plant can run at it depends on the regional levels what is the sustainable ebitda per ton and fourth point which we didn't cover here is that since upfront capex is high ye kafi debt equity mix leke kiya jata hai you typically take debt and gradually over it's a long term debt gradually over the period of time as you get the cash flows you repay the debt so capital allocation decision is also one of the key variable with respect to the unit irr of that project uh, now and which then also leads ki project completion time lies also become important kyunki aapka upfront capex itna bada hai you take debt your interest cost in the earlier years will be very high so agar aapka project 2 saal 3 saal se delay ho jata hai then that adds a lot of burden to your overall irr so these are the three four key variables which one should remember when looking at any project cap- uh, capacity expansion of the people now friends now let's come to the unit economics of cement production and kyu ye important hai uh, i think cement ke andar mein when i look at the different cost elements like power and fuel freight and logistics jo around 60% of the overall cost uh, hai manufacturing ke both these things are ultimately linked to oil right and as a result of the fluctuations we see ki inka jo ebitda per ton ka number hai that is a volatile number right it varies between 20 30% even within very short span of time two quarter two quarter ek two quarter ke beech mein it changes a lot we have seen that in recent times that oil went from 60 70 80 dollars जहाँ पे दे वर मेकिंग थर्टीन हंड्रेड फोर्टीन हंड्रेड एबिटा पर टन टू अ नंबर लाइक वन ट्वेंटी वन थर्टी डॉलर्स पर टन फ्यू मंथ्स बैक वेन दी एबिटा पर टन फॉर देम रिड्यूस टू लेस देन थाउजेंड रुपीज पर टन राइट सो ये वोलेटिलिटी के चक्कर में स्टॉक्स ऑल्सो मूव राइट इफ द माइक्रो वेरिएबल चेंजेस इन एन एडवर्स डिरेक्शन देन वील सी की एबिटा पर टन इन द अपकमिंग क्वार्टर्स विल बी इम्पैक्टेड एंड मार्केट फैक्टर्स दैट uh near term impact on the stock prices very aggressively which is why we get cycles to make money also right if we understand ki macro variables ke kya impact hai on this ebitda per ton then we can actually time the bottom and the peak of the cycles 
and it offers good opportunity to make higher than just the normal compounding in this business right so what we'll do is that we'll try to understand each of these cost elements in greater detail ki kya drivers are of individual respective heads and at the same point of time we'll understand ki ye sare costs ka ebitda pattern mein kya sensitivity hai because that is what will ultimately help us to take stock decisions start karte hain raw material se so the first point is that raw material forms roughly around 15% of the overall manufacturing cost of cement and raw materials kya char hai so char common raw materials for cement are limestone gypsum fly ash and slag now let's start with one ton of ordinary portland cement what we know is that we need 95% clinker 5% gypsum so it implies that 0.95 ton of clinker is required to produce one ton of opc now limestone ko jab hum log clinker mein convert karte hain then 100 units of limestone gets converted after heating to form 70 units of clinker so there is a conversion ratio of 70% in that case for 0.95 ton of clinker we need 1.36 ton of limestone using that 70% conversion ratio so in an opc we know that we need 1.36 ton of limestone and 5% is the gypsum so we need 0.05 ton of gypsum similarly when it comes to ppc and psc the requirement of clinker is lower so for ppc we need 0.65 ton of clinker for psc we need 0.4 ton of clinker applying that same 70% principle we get the amount of limestone we need and apart from limestone and gypsum what additionally is needed in portland pozzolana cement is 30% fly ash which is 0.3 ton of fly ash uh, fly ash and for portland slag cement we need 55% of slag which is 0.55 ton of slag the concept is to convert entire number into this particular uh, analysis that what is ultimately the mix of limestone gypsum fly ash and slag we need for different products then we know that currently the cost of mining limestone is roughly around 500 rupees per ton gypsum ka cost is 2000 rupees per ton fly ash and slag rates are volatile based on what is the demand supply in of that residue item at power plants and steel plants but le de ke 600 se 700 rupaya 800 rupaya ke aas pass ka 600 to 800 is the rate of fly ash and slag now multiplying the rates and the quantities required we see that total raw material cost per ton of cement is more around 750 to 850 rupees depending on whatever the category is as we discussed earlier companies don't give the mix of opc ppc and psc so the way to understand the mix is to track the cement to clinker ratio higher the better because higher cement to clinker implies that you have greater mix of ppc and psc it is highest for nuboco acc now for example uh, nuboco it's east dominated plants where portland slag cement is a very common thing because of availability of slag and the number is also very high but for example for a pan india player like ultratech the number is more like 1.4 times something similar to 1.5 x where overall industry stands so this is the first element raw material cost now we'll move to the second element of fuel cost which roughly forms 30% of the overall manufacturing cost fuel kis liye chahiye rehta hai we need to understand that limestone needs to be burned to produce or basically to convert it into clinker now when we say that it needs to be burned then what we means that we need fuel to give that energy so the first metric to understand here is that what is the energy requirement for producing 1 kg or clinker and that is known as thermal energy efficiency so that number is roughly around 750 implying 750 kilo cal of energy is required for producing 1 kg of clinker now we know that for an opc we need 0.95 ton of clinker from the previous example that number is lower for ppc and psc and simultaneously uh, we can derive that what is the overall energy requirement for producing 1 ton of cement so in case of opc that is somewhere around 7 lakh 12000 kilocal of energy so this is the first part to understand second part to understand here is the mix of fuel we need now fuel can be of four types one is petco which is a derivation from the oil value chain the second is the domestic coal which we get from coal india right 
third is imported coal that players might import coal from indonesia or other regions into india for using it in the production and the uh, fourth part is alternate fuel which is basically using the waste materials uh, to become a part of the energy requirement in the clinker and this is basically the part which replaces the thermal energy so these three are the thermal sources of energies this is the non thermal part so the second point is what is the mix of fuel when it comes to sourcing these kilocalories of energy right now pet coke was something which uh, many of the players started using in the last decade and its mix kept on increasing in the overall uh, fuel mix because of few of the advantage we are going to cover that in some time now the so once we need to figure out the mix now domestic coal is roughly 5% because uh, even the coal uh, india is there in india but problem is that the priority for coal india is to meet the power requirements demand so firstly they will meet the coal demands of power plants and once that is met then the in the third fourth fifth priority comes things like cement steel etc so which is why getting a coal linkage is difficult in india in that substitute what people use is imported coal so the two most common sources today is using of pet coke and imported coal and this number obviously varies differently for different companies ab ek aur cheez jo yahan samajhne ke liye important hai how to look at the cost and this is the third part now ek 1 ton pet coke which is 1000 kg of pet coke costs around 20000 so which converts to roughly around 20 rupees per kg right similarly and 1 kg of pet coke yields 7700 kcal of energy so in a way my cost of 1 kcal of energy if i derive it from pet coke then the rate is rupees 20 divided by 7.7 which is 2.6 rupees for every 1000 kcal of energy right Slightly complex, but try to be with me. One ton pet coke का cost है 20,000. हजार तो बेसिकली एक टन हजार के जी रहता है तो मेरा एक के जी पेट कोक का कॉस्ट है बीस रुपया ट्वेंटी रुपीज फॉर एवरी के जी ऑफ पेट कोक इफ आई बर्न दैट देन आई गेट अराउंड सेवेंटी सेवन हंड्रेड नेट किलो कैल ऑफ एनर्जी सो माई कॉस्ट ऑफ थाउजेंड किलो कैलरीज is 20 divided by 7.7 which is 2.6 rupees for every 1000 kcal energy right similarly we get the rate of sources and we try to convert it in form of rupees per kcal uh, per 1000 kcal and this is a very commonly discussed uh, number on conference calls and uh, that is one of the uh, key questions key format in which management answers the question regarding the rate of fuel right now so on a blended basis the rate of uh the consumption comes at around 2.5 rupees for every 1000 kcal and then this rate and this quantity give me the number of around 1700 to 1800 rupees per ton of fuel cost for opc in ppc and psc since my requirement of clinker is lower i save a lot on the fuel cost and this exactly is the savings which we talked about the cement companies benefiting by using ppc and psc unke liye overall cost of product Production of cement is much lower in the other two categories because of the lower fuel requirements, right? Uh, if I add the raw material and the fuel costs on a blended basis, on a overall basis, then we can see the difference between PPC and PSC versus an OPC is there uh, to the advantage of the cement companies. Now, this is an important metric again that uh, which people give in annual report, companies give it in the annual report or track. करना बहुत जरूरी है. कि वॉट इज योर थर्मल एनर्जीज राइट सो जेके लक्ष्मी हैज वन ऑफ द मोस्ट एफिशियंट थर्मल एनर्जीज दे रिक्वायर अराउंड सेवन हंड्रेड किलो कैल ऑफ एनर्जीज फॉर मेकिंग वन के जी ऑफ क्लिंकर फॉर ए सी सी अंबुजा द नंबर इज रिलेटिवली हायर देन पेयर्स अराउंड सेवन फोर्टी सेवन फिफ्टी किलो कैल ऑफ एनर्जी पर के जी ऑफ क्लिंकर इज वॉट दे कंज्यूम सो देर इज ऑब्वियसली रूम फॉर दैम टू इम्प्रूव एंड द सेकेंड मेट्रिक इज वॉट इज द थर्मल सब्सटीट्यूशन रेट दैट इज नथिंग बट द यूज ऑफ ऑल्टरनेट फ्यूल वॉट परसेंटेज ऑफ माई ओवर एनर्जी रिक्वायरमेंट आई मीट थ्रू ऑल्टरनेट फ्यूल वॉट इज द एडवांटेज ऑफ यूजिंग ऑल्टरनेट फ्यूल इज दैट इट्स वर्चुअली द वेरिएबल कॉस्ट ऑफ यूजिंग इट इज वेरी लो सो इज यू वुड सिन वी हैव नॉट अकाउंटेड फॉर ऑल्टरनेट फ्यूल वेरिएबल कॉस्ट इन आर कैलकुलेशन बिकॉज इट्स वेरी लो बट वॉट नीड्स टू बी डन फॉर दैट इज दैट यू विल हैव टू do the capital expenditure on your clinker to ensure that your clinker can 
is suitable for using alternate fuel as a source of energy right so dalmia has invested in that and right now he meets around 13 percent of its energy requirements through alternate fuel number is much lower for even the industry leaders like sri ultra tech but i think that this can be a very big delta for cost savings because it's 30 percent of the cost is fuel and if you increase your tsr then it can give a meaningful benefit to the overall cost of production going forward so it's an going to be an important point to track going forward we move to the uh, next cost line item which is power power is six to seven percent of the overall manufacturing cost now power is required across the value chain so you require it at the step of uh, homogenizing the limestone clinkerization grinding uh, of the cement but we express the power requirement as power unit requirement for one ton of cement right so that number is roughly 75 kilowatt hour uh, of power requirement Another thing too that you can meet the power requirement through either thermal energy ya to grid energy se mein leke kar sakta hu. and the other thing is that or I can set up green energies like solar energy, wind energy etc. I can set up waste heat recovery system. Again this is a very efficient ways which many of the people, uh, many of the cement companies are using. What is WHRA? So jab aap limestone ko you convert to clinker so you burn at 1500 degree to 1600 degree celsius in that process heat is generated and basically you you use this heat to boil the water right and once you boil water then gas is produced and this gas is used to run the turbine which generates electricity right so basically i am using the heat from my clinkerization process to generate energy so there is no additional cost of generating electricity but setting up the entire system requires rupees 10 crore per megawatt that is the cost of setting whrs so companies have invested in setting up whrs and green energy capacity the reason being once you set it up your variable cost is much lower it's 5.5 rupees per kilowatt hour of thermal energy versus 70 pesa for green energy or whrs generated energy so there is a visible benefit and uh the average blended cost at an 80 20 percent mix is roughly four and a half rupees per kilowatt hour which converts to 340 rupees per ton of cement uh, in general the two more points to compare the various cement players is one is what is your electric energy efficiency what is the kilowatt hour per ton of cement you use lower the better Novoco has the lowest while ACC again has one of the highest because it has very older uh, plants the second thing and a very important metric to track here is green energy basically renewable and WHRS what is that as a percentage of your overall power requirement so Sri cement uh, is one of the highest around 48 percent of its overall power requirement is met through green energy while ACC Ambuja currently has the lowest composition only three to five percent of their overall power requirement is met through green energy so there is room for improvement here the fourth element is fret cost which forms again around 25 percent of the overall uh, cost of manufacturing so kya is mein samanya zaruri hai dosto is ki ek cement kitna travel karta hai from its point of uh, from basically starting point to the point of consumption ya dealer ke point tak kitna kilometer ek average way mein travel karta so that number is 400 kilometer is what one ton of cement travels in its entire life journey yahan pe ek important concept mein launch karunga the concept of grinding unit right so when i look at cement to sabse pehle limestone rakhe format mein the raw material is there then the second transportation is after you manufacture it as manufactured clinker for limestone and then up clinkers is cement banate ho by adding fly ash by adding slag etc right so agar 100 kg yahan pe hai aapka total limestone then once you convert into clinker it forms around 70 kg so it becomes from 100 kg to 70 kg right and then in this 70 kg assuming cement to clinker ratio of 1.5 x right then you again make around one uh, 105 kgs of cement by adding fly ash and slag to clinker right so in the entire journey the most efficient way is to ensure that clinker is transferred at the majority of the distance right so what do you do? clinker plant 
यू सेट इट नियर लाइम स्टोन रिजर्व ताकि आपका लाइम स्टोन कम से कम ट्रैवल करे यू कन्वर्ट दैट लाइम स्टोन इन टू क्लिंकर देन यू ट्रैवल क्लिंकर अक्रॉस मोस्ट ऑफ द रीजन फ्रॉम द पॉइंट ऑफ मैन्युफैक्चर इन टू द पॉइंट ऑफ कंजम्पन एंड यू बिल्ड द ग्राइंडिंग यूनिट नियर द कंजम्पन पॉइंट वेर यू मिक्स फ्लायर्स स्लैग एक्सेट्रा सो विद इन दिस प्रोसेस वॉट हैपन्स इज दैट दिस सेवेंटी के जी ट्रैवल्स द लोएस्ट ट्रैवल्स द मोस्ट एंड इट कन्वर्ट्स टू अ लोअर लीड डिस्टेंस ओवरऑल राइट this entire concept is called split grinding unit basically to split your clinker unit and your grinding unit your clinker unit needs to be near the limestone reserves uh, and your grinding unit needs to be the point near the point of consumption as a result jo aapka rasta travel karta hai which is in form of clinker which is the lowest weight product in the value chain it ultimately leads up to a lower lead distance right so overall lead distance is 400 kilometers for 1 ton of cement How can it travel? It can travel through road and rail. Road ka rate is higher. Road it costs around two point seven rupees per ton kilometer. For rail it's lower, but the industry mix is roughly eighty twenty eighty percent of the travel happens through road itself, which gives me a blended cost of around thousand rupees uh, of travel cost per ton of cement. Four hundred into two point five. So what we track again here is that what is the lead distance for different players for a pan India player like Ultra Tech. the lead distance will be higher but for example say a player like sagar cement jo ap telangana mein banata hai and he distributes in the nearby region your lead distance is only 285 kilometers which is much lower than maybe a pan india player so that is the first element and the second metric to track is ki tumhara logistics mix kya hai aap ke rail or sea which is typically a lower cost mode of transportation what is that as a percentage so for acc ambuja that is highest around 30 35% of their overall transportation is through rail or uh, is through rail or sea uh, which gives them that logistics cost advantage for player like ultra tech that number is more around 27% for smaller players where they don't have that access like sagar your entire transportation happens through road so ये सारे कॉस्ट मेट्रिक समझने का कारण क्या है फ्रेंड्स तो इज दैट इफ आई लुक एट इंडिया एज अ होल एज्यूमिंग दिस 30 60 10 मिक्स ऑफ ओपीसी पीपीसी एंड पीएससी माय ब्लेंडेड कॉस्ट इज समथिंग लाइक दैट मेरा 15 परसेंट कॉस्ट इज रॉ मटेरियल फ्यूल इज 30 परसेंट ऑफ द कॉस्ट पावर इज अराउंड फाइव टू सिक्स परसेंट ऑफ दिन परसेंट ऑफ द कॉस्ट फ्रेट इज रफली ट्वेंटी परसेंट ऑफ द कॉस्ट एंड इसके अलावा द एम्प्लॉय कॉस्ट इज टिपिकली फाइव टू सिक्स परसेंट ऑफ द ओवरऑल कॉस्ट एंड the balance 20% of the cost uh, is more to do with the packaging marketing etc now the purpose of this exercise is to ensure that ebitda sensitivity say in this entire calculation right if i change one particular factor then how my ebitda changes so for example my lead distance was 400 kilometers if i change it to a 5% lower number say 380 kilometers then my ebitda improves by 4% right if i keep everything else constant similarly my green energy and whr whrs mix if i increase from 20 to 25% of the overall power consumption then my ebitda improves by 2% similarly my pet coke price was rupees 20 per kg if that reduces to 18 rupees per kg if it's a 10% reduction because of the macro factor then i gain 6% to my overall ebitda numbers uh for example limestone if my cost of limestone moves from 500 to 525 a 5% increase then my ebitda decreases by 2% and this sensitivity calculation is important because it helps me judge that if stock is reacting to a particular macro variable then what is the extent of impact you should feel to be justifiable say for example if my pet coke prices increase by 10% and stock reduces by more than 6% so you know that ebitda might reduce by 4% so you will be able to catch the bottom of that particular stock price movement and vice versa now trying to match the cost per ton at an overall and compare it across players now shri has one of the lowest uh, raw material cost per ton why because they have pioneered the process of manufacturing a synthetic gypsum ye log ek low grade limestone se uh they manufacture synthetic gypsum and they manufacture it in house it's a patented process that gives them benefit of not having to buy costly gypsum from the market that adds to their raw material efficiency similarly when we look at power and fuel cost uh shri ne ek bahut important cheez kiya tha 
थोड़ा सा ध्यान दीजिएगा यहाँ पे सो वॉट हैपन्स इज दैट वेन आई सेट अ क्लिंकर यूनिट से आई नीड टू सेट अराउंड थ्री थाउजेंड टन्स पर डे क्लिंकर प्लान वन वेज टू सेट अप ऑल टूगेदरली इट्स अ वन सिंगल रोटरी क्लिन विच आई सेट ऑप्शन ए ऑप्शन बी इज दैट आई कैन सेट अप थ्री वन थाउजेंड थ्री वन थाउजेंड टन्स पर डे यूनिट एट द सेम प्लेस राइट वॉट इज द डिफरेंस हेयर नाउ टू अंडरस्टैंड इज दैट आप जब क्लिंकर को सो यू नीड क्लिंकर फॉर बर्निंग लाइम स्टोन एंड कन्वर्टिंग इट टू क्लिंकर सो यू नीड टू टेक द हीट इन दैट पर्टिकुलर क्लिंकर टू अ पर्टिकुलर रीज लेवल बिफोर यू कैन स्टार्ट द प्रोसेस सो वेन एवर यू क्लोज द क्लिंकर इट कूल्स डाउन फिर वापस चालू करने में आपको उसको हीट करना पड़ेगा पहले टू टेक इट अप टू अ पर्टिकुलर लेवल वेन यू कैन स्टार्ट द प्रोसेस ऑफ पुटिंग लाइम स्टोन एंड कन्वर्टिंग इन टू क्लिंकर बेसिकली इम्प्लाइंग दैट स्टार्टिंग एंड स्टॉपिंग हैज अ कॉस्ट राइट नाउ इफ यू हैव अ थ्री थाउजेंड टी पी डी एंड अज्यूमिंग की डिमांड इज नॉट देर इतना डिमांड नहीं है टू प्रोड्यूस देन ऑल्सो यू विल हैव टू ऑपरेट दैट एंटायर थ्री थाउजेंड टी पी डी बिकॉज इफ यू स्टॉप एंड अगेन रीस्टार्ट देन देर इज एन एडिशनल कॉस्ट बट से फॉर एग्जाम्पल इन दिस केस यू नो दैट डिमांड इज लोअर सो वॉट यूल डू इज दैट यू विल रन ओनली टू यूनिट्स एंड यू विल नॉट रन द थर्ड यूनिट इट्स इन द सेम रीजन फर्क नहीं पड़ता इन टर्म्स ऑफ लॉजिस्टिक्स बट यू जस्ट ऑपरेट दीज टू क्लिंकर यूनिट्स एंड एज अ रिजल्ट वॉट हैपन्स इज दैट यू कैन मैच योर प्रोडक्शन एंड योर यू कैन मैच योर प्रोडक्शन विद द डिमांड इन द मार्केट एंड दैट हेल्प्स यू बी मोर एफिशियंट सेकेंडली सिंस इट्स अ लोअर टर्न कैपेसिटी राइट यू डोंट हैव टू कंसिस्टेंटली स्टॉप इट एंड शर्ट इट बेस्ड ऑन द डिमांड यू कैन कीप दिस टू रनिंग फॉर अ लॉन्गर पीरियड ऑफ टाइम सो यू सेव ऑन द पावर एंड फ्यूल कॉस्ट दिस इज वॉट श्री पायनियड इन मेनी ऑफ इट्स प्लान इन टू थाउजेंड फाइव टू टू थाउजेंड टेन पीरियड एंड विच इज वाई ही हैड दैट एडवांटेज इन टर्म्स ऑफ पावर एंड फ्यूल इन अ सिग्निफिकेंट वे सिमिलरली ही वॉज द फर्स्ट टू यूज पेट कोक एज अ रॉ मेटीरियल इंस्टेड ऑफ कोल and what happens is that petco offers me higher kilo cal of energy for the same weight same kg uh, and which even which helps me save on the logistics part right because transporting 1 kg same chahe aap usko line uh, ek coal ko transport karo 1 kg ya 1 kg petco ko but petco will yield better kilo cal efficiency right similarly in terms of fret cost shri cement was first to optimize on the split grinding unit and reduce the fret cost by a lot more so all in all these were examples to showcase that how a player can increase the efficiency and reduce its overall cost of production because that gives a very structural advantage when it comes to cement business this is a snapshot of some of the selected industry players right it's it's a comp you can halt the video and look at the numbers right it has details about what is their per ton economics been these are the actual numbers uh, a sense of their revenue ebitda pat and balance sheet two things is what i is highlight is that if i look at fi 21 and 22 fi 21 ebitda was around 1300 rupees per ton jo sabse highest tha probably in many years uh, highest if i remember in fi 22 because of the increase in power and fuel cost because of increase in fret cost it again normalized to 1100 per ton the second thing which i want to highlight is the overall margin of the industry and the profitability of the industry so uh, in this is not the entire set but these are the top 7 8 companies which constitute 60 70% of the overall business right so they did around 1.3 lakh crore of overall revenue and 29 30000 crore of overall ebitda as a cumulative number third important thing and it's an interesting thing is i try to also calculate कि आज तक ये लोग ने जितना कैपेसिटी लगाया है एंड दीज कंपनीज आर ऑपरेटिंग फॉर मोर देन 15 20 इयर्स ओवर द इयर्स दे हैव केप्ट ऑन एडिंग कैपेसिटी सो व्हाट इज द कॉस्ट एट व्हिच दे हैव बिल्ड द एग्जिस्टिंग कैपेसिटीज वी नो दैट टुडे मेकिंग अ ग्रीनफील्ड कैपेसिटी टेक्स अराउंड 110 डॉलर बेसिकली 8800 8800 टू 9000 रुपीस पर टन ऑफ cost is required to build a greenfield capacity which is why we compare that what is the advantage these players have then one caveat that if a player has built the capacity through acquisition then i add the intangible assets because it's ultimately part of their cost of acquisition of building that capacity now for ultra tech that number is somewhere around 6000 rupees versus the replacement cost of around 8000 9000 rupees right for shri that number is as low as 25 around 3000 rupees why 
because she has never done a lot of inorganic most of it 46 million ton capacity is organically driven for ultra tech the case is opposite they have done a lot of inorganic across the last 15 20 years so which is why the cost is slightly higher uh, compared to Sri cement ACC since they have the oldest plants uh, oldest plants which is why the number is low at around 3000 rupees Ambuja again they have not done many inorganic and it was set up in a very efficient way by, way by Narottam Saxaria that number is around 2000 to 3000 so th that is the level at which Sri ACC and Ambuja operate but now for example Adani has brought it at a much at a value which is near to the replacement cost for example, if I take Nuboko, the number is as high as around 9,000 rupees, very much near to what the replacement cost is. Reason, most of the 24-25 million ton capacity is built through inorganic acquisition for which they have paid the price to Lafarge, Imami, etc. So which is why it is more near to the number. How this number impacts the financials is in ROE matrix, right? So if you have a lower cost of setting up than plan, lower capex per capacity you have, then obviously you will be able to command a much better ROE, ROC profile, right? Uh, I'll suggest you can halt on to this video right now and look at the numbers, grasp it, have a sense of it. Uh, I'll move on to the next slide, which is more like a summary. Now cement, we need to understand is a cyclical business. How are the cycles created? Cycles are created by demand phases, right? So in 13 to 17, demand grew by mere 3%. Uh, so demand slowdown phases can create cycles. Cycles can be created by price competition, thing which we are seeing in South. Because of oversupply, players are not being able to yield proper realization. So there is a price competition out there. Some cycles can be created by cost pressure, something which we saw in FI22. And in cement, you get the stocks at the cheapest valuation or the best prices when there is a mix of low growth plus weak margin uh, and those are the periods where you get uh, these stocks at a much reasonable EV EBITDA multiples uh, probably they are near to the bottom of the cycle at those point of time friends now we move to the final section of our discussion right so uh, here we discuss karege? three of the largest cement players of India Ultratech Cement, Sri Cement and ACC Amuja we are going to discuss how these companies have evolved over time uh, in ki kya geographic presence hai, what is the market share across different regions and what is the strategy over next three to four years and try to capture that in form of back of the envelope calculation ki ye kya valuations pe trade ho rahe on a EV EBITDA multiple right so let's start with Ultratech Cement Ultratech Cement today is a 120 million ton capacity player with 20% market share but it all started in 1983 right in 1983 Grassim Cement uh, set up its first cement plan in Madhya Pradesh right and over 1983 to 2004 Grassim cement grew predominantly through in organic channels from 1 million ton to 13 million ton capacity at that point of time Grassim was a 9% market share uh, entity of the overall Indian cement market at the same time LNT was also there in this business LNT group as a whole and LNT in 2000, he was there in the business for a long period of time, even prior to 2000. He in 2000 mein apne sare cement businesses ko ek jaga consolidate kiya under Ultratech. So Ultratech was originally an LNT group company, and then it got listed in 2000 as an LNT group subsidiary which housed all its cement plants. In 2004, LNT had around 18 million ton of capacity. LNT in the sense Ultratech owned by LNT had 18 million ton capacity and a 12 percent market share in 2004 Grassim bought Ultratech from LNT uh, creating a 31 million ton capacity entity named as Ultratech which had more than 20 plus percent market share so that is how Ultratech under Aditya Birla group came under picture from 2004 to 2008 you look at time spent kia not on growth but in actually digesting the acquisition, uh, improving the efficiencies, improving the profitability. Then from 2008 to 2016, what Ultratech did is that he focused on organic expansion from 17 million ton to 43 million ton. It is during this period that they expanded in different regions uh, and by the end of 2016, they were a 70 million ton capacity player. By 2017, 
they repaid all the debt which they took to expand rather in 2017 they had an ebitda of around 5000 crore rupees and they are virtually net debt free fir the next leg of expansion started from 2017 to 2022 but this time rather than organic expansion they took up the inorganic route which they did around 42 million tons of acquisition and iske andar kya kya included the inke andar jp associates ke assets included the and century assets century cement ke assets included the both of them combined gave them good position in central market and they also acquired binani cement binani cement gave them a good position improved their position in east so basically 2017 to 22 majority of the growth from came through in organic and today when i look at ultratech 120 million ton capacity 70 million ton 70 million ton capacity is something which they have gathered through inorganic routes rather if i look at ultratech over a long period of time they have followed the approach of a mix of organic and inorganic exp- group so 1983 to 2004 it was a period of organic then they did inorganic by lnt acquiring ultratech from lnt cement again 2004 to 2016 it was a period when they predominantly grew through organic roots 2016 to 22 it was a period they focused on inorganic now from 2002 to 22 to 2025 they have come out with their expansion plans uh, they have discussed about that in their presentation and unka target hai to reach 150 million ton capacity by 2025 When I look at Ultratech, they are truly a pan-India player. They have around 15 to 25 percent uh, of the mix. Uh, so, unke 120 million ton of the capacity is very well distributed in North, West, East, South, uh, and Central. If I look at their market share, at an overall level, it's 20 percent market share. But in North, they are the number two player after Sri uh, with 22 percent market share. Central post the recent consolidation. and acquisition of century and uh, jp associates they are now 35% market share in west they enjoy 35% market share the next one is accm bujha with 20% market share south they are the leader even though not a very major market share but since it's a frank bended market but they have 12% market share in that region east they are one of the top 5 players 15% market share i will not say that they are leader in east but they are amongst the five equal players within that segment So now let's move to how Sri Cement has evolved over period of time. So Sri Cement started its journey in 1979. They set up their first cement plant in 1985 in Bewar, Rajasthan. This is the area where still uh, a lot of Sri Cement's capacity, even going forward, got added. But in 2002, it was a tough year where Sri was on the verge of bankruptcy. and ye vikat cement ko bikne jane wala tha just that one night before hm bangar who is currently the chairman he decided ki ye mere ko bechna nahi hai and i want to run the show and from 2002 to 2010 uh, there was a massive turn around from being on the verge of bankruptcy she was the most profitable and most cost efficient player in 2010 right and uh, what are the things which hm bangar did to improve and to bring that turn around many things which were industry first at that point of time he replaced coal with pet coke because of the advantages of logistics right pet coke has around 7700 kilo calories per uh, kg uh, while coal gives 4500 kilo calories per kg so since the weight is same so transportation cost is same but you get higher energy in pet coke which is why you save and save on the overall logistics second पावर इज अ वेरी एसेंशियल कमोडिटी फॉर सीमेंट प्लांट्स एक तरीका है कि आप जाके डिस्काउंट से टाइप करो एंड रिलाई ऑन द ग्रेड पावर बट दैट बिकम्स वेरी अनसर्टन बिकॉज काफ़ी बार पावर चला जाता है या एक डेडिकेटेड सप्लाई नहीं रहता है बट श्री डिसाइडेड इज दैट ही सेटअप इट्स ओन कैप्टिव पावर प्लांट्स ही इज इन्वेस्टेड इन वेस्ट हिट रिकवरी सिस्टम ग्रीन एनर्जी एंड एज अ रिजल्ट इज कॉस्ट ऑफ प्रोडक्ट पावर ऑल्सो रिड्यूस्ड प्लस इट दी सोर्स ऑफ पावर वॉज ऑल्सो मोर सर्टन एंड स्टडी दैट हेल्प he was the first to use split grinding unit we discussed earlier that he centered uh, he made the clinker factory near the limestone and he made the grinding unit factory near the consumption area as a result clinker traveled the maximum distance which helps in reducing the logistics cost uh, he was also the first one to pioneer not setting up large clinker units at one point rather than setting up small clinker units of uh, smaller sizes at one place as a result which 
had the advantage ki if there is no demand or low demand then you can operate only one or two of its unit rather than being required to operate the entire large clinker capacity and incurring that cost of shutting down and restarting so that is how uh, she cement stabilized by 2009 2010 he was a 10 million ton capacity uh, but th their expansion phase started from 2013 Uh, where obviously they were a dominant player in north till that point of time but beyond 2013 over the next 7 to 8 years they not only expanded in north but they also gained market share in east rather they are right now around 12 to 13% market share player in the eastern region if i look at sri as we discussed 46 million ton capacity still a large part is there in north in north they have around 23 24% market share uh 14 million ton of their capacity is in east where they have 12% market share in all other regions uh she has tried to set its foot in uh so in central they are there with a 2 million ton capacity they added a 3 million ton capacity in maharashtra in fy22 in karnataka they have a 3 million ton capacity in kodla and they are planning to add another 3 million ton over the next 2 to 3 years so they are trying to expand even in the central south and uh, west markets but still predominantly today it's north and east which are the primary markets for sri cement let's move to acc and ambuja first understand the evolution of ambuja and acc as two separate companies uh, the overlap started happening in 2000s now ambuja was a first generation entrepreneurship story of narottam sakseria one of the veteran and he is credited credited with many of the firsts in the industry uh, he started in 1985 uh, afresh with a 1 million ton capacity and expanded it at 17% kegar to 16 million ton capacity by 2006 uh, he, he introduced many first things he was first one to emphasize on uh, ensuring that the plants are very eco friendly and as a result when aditya vikram birla came to see one of its plant he categorically called mr narottam sakseria to congratulate for uh, such kind of a plant construction he was the first one to think about transportation of cement through sea routes so he the plants were in gujarat he started supplying it to the west in maharashtra by building a sea route channel and that reduced the logistics cost significantly so again acc ambuja still today has the highest share of sea transportation amongst all other players credit to mr narottam sakseria so they grew very well in 2000 till 2006 in 2006 holcim group took over acc ambuja and in that period of 15 to 20 years they lost massive market share because they grew just at a 6% kegar uh, going forward it's adani who has brought it from holcim so new path which their overall business similarly looking at acc acc is the oldest cement company it was formed in 1940s by merger of 10 existing cement companies at that point of time uh, in 1970 to 2000 over the 30 years it just grew at 3% kegar during this period it was not a part of ambuja or not linked to ambuja in 2007 ambuja bought out tata group share in acc uh, and that is where the management overlap started in the interim phase of 2000 to 2006 when ambuja management was guiding acc they grew at 8% kegar but again similar story to ambuja once holcim took over the group the next 15 20 years saw market share loss because the growth rate was very tepid so when holcim took the market share of acc ambuja was roughly around 20% and when they left or adani took over from holcim their market share got reduced from 12% if i look at uh, the 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 transaction of acc ambuja sale to adani i think what is key to understand here is that uh, adani paid a price of around 385 per share for ambuja and 2300 acquisition price for acc uh, and combined he today owns around 65% of ambuja and 55% of acc on a merged basis assuming the acquisition price to be the swap ratio he owns roughly around 53% of the overall acc ambuja combined uh, at this uh, today now what has adani paid in terms of the implied market cap is roughly around 97800 crores uh, acc ambuja ke paas 9500 crore ka cash hai 9500 so in effect uh, adani has 
बॉट द बिजनेस एट एन ई वी ऑफ एटी एट थाउजेंड करोर इस एटी एट थाउजेंड करोर के लिए वॉट इज इट जो अडान आज ए सी सी एमबुजा बना रहे हैं सो ए सी सी एमबुजा के पास सिक्सटी एट मिलियन टन का कैपेसिटी है वो लोग एटी टू परसेंट यूटिलाइजेशन पर ऑपरेट करते हैं विच इम्प्लाइज फिफ्टी फाइव मिलियन टन ऑफ सेल्स एंड देर ओवरऑल एबिटा पर टन इज रफली अराउंड वन थाउजेंड वन ट्वेंटी रुपीज़ एट दैट ईयर में दे मेड 6200 करोड़ ऑफ ओवरऑल एबिटा अभी अगर ये एबिटा मैं पकड़ूं एंड फॉर व्हाट अडानी एज पेड इफ आई टेक दैट देन मेरा प्री टैक्स आर हुई सात सेवन परसेंट ही आता है विच प्राइमा फेसी इज नॉट चीप द प्राइस विच अडानी एज पेड लुक्स वेरी एक्सपेंसिव बट द क्वेश्चन इज दैट आर देर सिनर्जीज विच अडानी कैन ब्रिंग इन येस सो द फर्स्ट सिनर्जी इज द रॉयल्टी सेविंग्स ए सी सी एम्बुजा यूज टू पे अ फिफ्टी डॉलर फिफ्टी रुपीज पर टन टू होल सेम दैट इज अ स्ट्रेट आउट सेविंग्स then there is scope for some backward integration adani has its own power and fuel uh, sources adani power adani green uh, he has its own logistics arm adani ports uh, and we know that power and fuel and logistics ye yeah, 60% of the cost for any cement manufacturing right so ab uh, i am assuming ki 150 rupee per ton ka savings hoga there is no scientific logic to it uh, but we are going to get more clarity on this number as management कॉल्स पे आके दे गाइड अबाउट देयर बिजनेस दे टॉक अबाउट द स्ट्रैटेजी तब जाके और क्लैरिटी आएगा बट अभी के लिए मैं मान के चल रहा हूँ कि अगर ये 150 पर टन का एबिटा सेविंग्स बन ब्रिंग्स एट सेविंग्स ऑफ 150 पर टन एबिटा इम्प्रूव्स टू अराउंड 1300 हंड्रेड रुपीज़ नाउ अ बिग क्वेश्चन इज दैट विल अडानी एंट्रिंग लीड टू प्राइसिंग डिसिप्लिन मेरे हिसाब से नहीं ऑलरेडी एटी परसेंट यूटिलाइजेशन में ही डज नॉट नीड्स टू कट द प्राइसेज टू टू गेन मार्केट शेयर इवन एट अ ग्रेजुअल पेस वो उसको 82 को 90 परसेंट यूटिलाइजेशन लेके जा सकता है दो साल तीन साल में सो माई सेंस इज दैट ही विल ट्राई टू फोकस दैट नो एट दैट स्केल ऑफ 90 परसेंट यूटिलाइजेशन ही रीच एज अराउंड एट थाउजेंड करोर ऑफ एबिटा विच इम्प्लाइज अ नाइन परसेंट प्री टैक्स आर ओ सी राइट अभी जो सेकेंड क्वेश्चन आता है कि वी नो दैट एज पर मीडिया आर्टिकल्स ए सी सी अंबुजा करेंटली हैज अराउंड सिक्सटी एट मिलियन टन कैपेसिटी and adani has talked about doubling this entire capacity to 140 million ton in next 5 years so it's a very tall task but if i try to break here ye kaise ho sakta hai matlab what are the key sources so first thing is that 40 million ton of this capacity addition is going to come through inorganic two of i think so and based on speculations the two most likely targets are nuboco which has 24 million ton capacity and india cement which has around 15 million ton capacity ये क्या ऐड करते हैं अडानी को आई थिंक इंडिया सीमेंट एड्स टू हिज साउथ एक्स मार्केट ए सी सी एम्बुजा कम्बाइंड हैज टेन टू फिफ्टीन परसेंट मार्केट शेयर इन ऑल दी रीजन एक्सेप्ट साउथ वेर इट जस्ट हैज सिक्स परसेंट मार्केट शेयर अगर इंडिया सीमेंट वो खरीद लेता है विच हैज सेवन परसेंट मार्केट शेयर तो उसका कम्बाइंड मार्केट शेयर गोज टू अराउंड टेन प्लस परसेंट सो देर इज अ रीजन टू दैट नुबोको आई थिंक कैन बी अ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग एक्विजिशन ही ऑलरेडी हैज अराउंड फिफ्टीन परसेंट मार्केट शेयर इन ईस्ट If you add Nubuco 17% market share, then Adani will be a 30% plus market share in East, and that's a fast-growing market. Uh, in that market, there is no other established leader with 30%. He will be uh, roughly 2x the size of the next competitor. So, a lot of things can play out to his benefit with that kind of uh, leadership in a particular region. So, Nubuco makes an interesting bet. So, I think 40 million ton in organically he can do. and balance 30 million ton he will have to grow organically uh, adani 20000 crore raise kar raha hai he already has 10000 crore in books so he has kitty of 30000 crore for i think and obviously he'll be generating operating cash flows over the next 3 4 years so with all those things you can add 70 million ton if i take around 8000 rupees uh, per ton as the capex required and i see ki 70 million ton ka isko capacity chahiye then i think what he will need it is around 50 to 60000 crore rupees uh so let's see how he manages to grow it so uh, whether he does one more capital raise or not we are going to see uh, over time so now let's look at ki with all what we know how does the overall फोरकास्ट फॉर द थ्री प्लेयर्स अल्ट्राटेक श्री एंड ए सी सी एम्बुजा लुक लाइक अपना अप्रोच क्या रहेगा अप्रोच विल बी वेरी सिंपल वी आर गुड सी की वॉट इज द कपैसिटी यूटिलाइजेशन विच दीज प्लेयर्स आर एडिंग दीज प्लेयर्स हैव अनाउंसड दैट थिंग सेकेंड वी आर गुड फोरकास्ट की वॉट इज द एबिटा पर टन विच 
they can reach at over the next three to four years and with that we know that what is the EBITDA which they will be able to generate two years three years down the line and at today's price what is the EV EBITDA multiple market is giving to them right starting with Ultratech we know that they are going to reach 150 million ton capacity by 25 uh, they have expansion plan Shri has announced expansion plan of around 10 million ton taking them from 40, 46 million ton to 57 million ton for Adani I am building in a hundred million ton over the next three years. It will be a mix of organic and inorganic, but basis what we know through public information. The second thing is on the uh, EBITDA per ton part. Now EBITDA per ton will deteriorate for all the players in FI23 uh, because of the higher power costs. But expectation is that 24-25 में जैसे-जैसे demand वापस आएगी, आपका pricing power भी improve होगा and काफी सारे जो costs हैं आपके power logistics which were elevated in FI23 वो भी normalize हो जाएगी over the next two years. So I'm building a two percent of EBITDA per ton kegar over 22 to 25 for Ultratech and Shree Cement. Uh, for ACC Ambuja इनकी अभी EBITDA per ton is around 1,120 but as we discussed there are rooms for synergies in royalty, there are rooms for synergies in backward integration in power and fuel and logistics. So building everything in I am taking their EBITDA per ton to 1,500 rupees uh, and with these numbers I reach कि 3 से 4 साल में around FI25 में EBITDA which ultra taken clock is around 15,000 crore, she can clock around 5,000 crore and Assuming ACC Ambuja delivers and executes on the expectation, then he will be able to deliver a 12 to 13,000 crore of EBITDA. Now, if I look at the current prices, it implies around 11 times EV EBITDA on 24, 5 expected earnings which market is giving to Ultratech. Shri Kele Vaichi is 12 times EV EBITDA, which market is ascribing uh, to its 25 expectation. And ACC Ambuja, after the recent run up, I think markets are already giving him a 12 times EBITDA uh, to the expected numbers. Now, when the way I want to then place the market is that for me, Ultratech is the safest bet to play the cement sector. Near term, it's going to be slightly uncertain. Uh, people are going to wait on the sidelines to see ki ACC Ambuja is so aggressive rehta hai after Adani coming in. Uh, if they want to expand to 140 million ton, then obviously there will be pockets where Ultratech and Adani are going to compete against each other. Now, so there are near term uncertainties, but still Ultratech is the largest player. So with size, he has the benefit of a very strong balance sheet to uh, he is geographically very diversified. So if East may kuch kharab hota bhi hai, then he has other regions to support his overall uh, profitability. Third, he has a very strong brand and uh, that helps him to generate a very strong operating profitability and remain a dominant player. So for playing a safest uh, bet in this segment, Ultratech is definitely a, a preferred choice. Shri Cement, he has been a darling for stock markets for last decade. Uh, but I think in the north, he has established and it's a very stable market for him, a primary source of profits. But a lot of expansion which Shri has done in the East mein hai in the last 6 to 7 years. And East I really feel if Nivoko is acquired by Adani, then Adani will have 30% market share in that region which will change the dynamics of that market, right? And how that pans out is a lot, is, is something which matters a lot when it comes to Shri Siman's incremental earnings growth. So for me, I would wait and watch in Shri Siman to see how East pans out. Uh, for ACC Ambuja, my sense is that there is too much of hope getting built in. Even if I assume that they expand to 100 million ton and clock of 1500 rupees of EBITDA per ton, which carries an execution risk, then the mark, it, then today I am buying it at around 12 times EBITDA, uh, which is not cheap, similar to the uh, other players. Now, my sense is that markets are ignoring the execution risk. And there is very little room for disappointment uh, left in the numbers, at least at these prices. Now, summarizing it, Adani entering the game, uh, is it right to conclude that it's going to be disruptive even for peers? No, I don't think so. They have definitely bought it at a very expensive price. So they will have to bring in the synergies, focus uh, on improving the ROC profile. And that's going to be the key, key, key sensible approach for Adani to follow. 
let's now move to finally looking at few ground rules for investing in the sector right so the first thing is i try to see ki yaar inke stock valuations which is nothing but ev ebitda multiples what matters for that right is it size or is it the operating profitability that matters is it the growth that matters we want to see it in the coming slides we will map ev ebitda across different matrices and try to see ki kis mein sabse zyada correlation baithta hai but before that let me just cover two points one i think the industry is going to see a very rapid phase of consolidation over next 10 years those are who are there with 4 5 6 7 million ton capacities they understand that there is no point uh, being in such a competitive and clouded market and it will be very difficult to uh, create value being here so which is why they would want to exit and at the same point of time the larger players like ultra shi adani they have that balance sheet strength to consolidate the market and grow and become bigger uh, no one thing so one would be direct acquisition so for example adani might go and acquire 40 million ton of the capacity but the other way of consolidation can be that players start acting in tandem and in in groups so my sense is that ultra tech shri adani these will be three large groups in the ecosystem even those who don't get merged formally will have informal alliances with either of these groups and market will behave in terms of the demand supply pricing in certain cohesiveness with these three groups uh, being there so it's going to be an interesting market let's see how it pans out the second key event is going to be 2030 where the limestone mines are going to get reauctioned so the regulation says that 2030 or 50 years of original grant whichever is earlier so from 2030 to basically 2060 most of the existing mines will come under uh, reauction now what happens that existing owner has the right of first refusal but even if he decides uh, he has the right to first acceptance but even if he decides to retain that mine he will have to pay the price which the highest bidder has bid for right so there is going to be bidding which will naturally increase your cost of limestone raw material versus what you are paying today and the second important thing is going to be the limestone mines are very important to the overall manufacturing process you set clinker near to the limestone aap baithate ho wo soch ke kyunki mere ko ek long term basis mein ek factory baithana ek uh, क्लिंकर फैसिलिटी बैठाना है आई विल ट्राई टू फर्स्ट सोर्स द लाइम स्टोन एंड मेरा क्लिंकर फैसिलिटी उसके आसपास रहेगा नाउ अगर आपको अचानक से बोला गया कि आपके पास वो क्लिंकर फैसिलिटी नहीं है देन यू एंड अप इन अ बिग सूप बिकॉज यू कॉन्ट ट्रांसपोर्ट लाइम स्टोन फ्रॉम वेरी लॉन्ग डिस्टेंसेज तो आपको किसी भी हालत में अपना लाइम स्टोन कोर की लाइम स्टोन माइन्स रखना ही पड़ेगा एंड एट दैट पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम अडानी माइट यूज दैट एंटायर इवेंट टू गेन एन एडवांटेज to gain the good quality mines at good places uh with his uh strength across the overall uh, uh political systems also so i think these two are key things which one needs to keep in mind uh not a very near term event but in next 10 to 12 years these are things which will come up uh yes now moving to the final part that what drives the stock right so the first thing is that does ex sales expectation over the next 2 3 year matters my sense is no not much strong correlation to it reason it's not an industry where some player will grow at 40% the other will grow at uh, 2 to 3% right there is a 10 to 15% bracket where most of the players will range so that's not a big differentiator in my view similarly if i look at the historic growth is the correlation very high again no similar reason to the last one that you can't grow very different from the industry does size matter i think yes size matters but up to a particular point of time right up to you reach a 10% market share size matters so as you grow from a 10 million ton capacity player to 50 million ton there is definitely a scope of free rating you enjoy but beyond a point of time i don't think that size matters see shri and ultra tech uh, ultra tech is more than 2x of what shri is but still they enjoy the same valuation multiples the reason being that beyond a particular level i think every player has a equal right to grow and does not impact much now then what matters i think the biggest correlation to stock multiples ev ebitda multiples are with ebitda pattern 
अगर सेक्टर का ऑपरेटिंग प्रॉफिटेबिलिटी पर टर्न इम्प्रूव होता है देन सेक्टर री रेट्स इफ दैट डज नॉट इम्प्रूव और इफ एबिटा पर टर्न डिक्रीजेज फ्रॉम से थाउजेंड इलेवन हंड्रेड लेवल टू एट हंड्रेड लेवल फॉर द एंटायर सेक्टर दैन द सेक्टर डी रेट्स एंड वी कैन सी दैट देर इज अ वेरी हाई को रिलेशन अक्रॉस प्लेयर्स टू दिस मेट्रिक्स एंड इफ आई ट्राई टू लुक बैक आई थिंक इंटरेस्टिंग पॉइंट इज कि यार ये विशेष सर्कल है आपके पास अगर एबिटा पर टर्न अच्छा है then what you can do is that you can invest in branding you can create more brands around your product and second you can invest in say waste heat recovery system renewable energy uh, thermal uh, captive power plants you can invest in improving your alternate fuel mix in the energy requirements all these things require you to invest right and for investment you will have to have a very strong cash flows which your existing business will have to throw right and it's a vicious circle jaise jaise aap invest karte ho waise waise it gives you the benefit in the overall ebitda uh, per ton so uh, i think which is why size is very important and so you either pick a player which where he has the growth aspirations to increase its size from 6 7 million ton capacity to 15 20 million ton capacity can you see that hunger in that management to increase its size and so that is one of the bigger lever big levers and the second bigger lever is that do you think that a player is improving his ebitda per ton simultaneously right so these two are the key factors which i believe matters from a stock point of view so friends i come to the end of my presentation i really hope that uh, you guys enjoyed it and found it to be useful i would try to do this for more number of sectors over time uh, but i think happy to talk more about cement or any other sector uh, or any other stocks my email id is below please like subscribe my channel see you soon thank you